May I come in, sir? Yes, please. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. So, why do you wish to join the civil service? Sir, so, I wish to join the civil service because of the diversity of the opportunity it provides. With that, there is a good career prospect and I also get to serve the society. Good, very nice. So, what qualities do you possess which will make you a good civil servant? So I think I have a decent knowledge of the society. I'm honest and have uh, and possess integrity. I am patient and have a good uh, and can understand people. I am sensitive towards people of the society. I think these qualities make me able to be joining the services. When did you complete your BSc honors? So I completed my BSc honors in 2016. Okay, since then what have you been doing? Uh, sir, I uh, started preparing in 2016. I gave oh. my first interview. Right. Uh, pushing is our hmm. uh, What is judicial activism? Sir, so, judicial activism is a means by which judiciary tries to enter the premises of the legislature or the executive uh, however, it uh, does so in the constitutional means itself when it sees that certain laws are lacking in certain areas or uh, implementation of these laws have not been done properly. Can you uh, think of some cases where you think and you feel that judiciary crossed the limits and uh, maybe it amounted to judicial activism as per your definition? Uh, sir, on the top of my mind, I have one incident where a uh, judiciary uh, announced uh, that CNG buses should be made compulsory in Delhi. Uh, so that is one case I can uh, You have heard of Visaka guidelines? Yes, sir. Do you think that was activism? Uh, uh, sir, it, I, would, I wouldn't say it was activism per se. Uh, but definitely because judiciary entered the premises of uh, making these guidelines and uh, uh, directed to have them implemented. So, uh, yes, sir, it would be a borderline case of judicial activism. What is the present scenario with respect to the present law on sexual harassment at workplace? Uh, sir, I don't exactly remember. Uh, the name, you don't need to know, but you know what has happened. What happened subsequently? Yes, what is yes, the new sir. development? So the development right now is that all the uh, uh, um, companies and firms, they have to implement uh, sexual harassment guidelines, uh, which are there in the, uh, mentioned in the Vishafa guidelines. And uh, they also need to have an ICC uh, to oversee any complaints that come in uh, for sexual harassment in workplaces. Okay, now I need to point out the Vishafa guidelines, the court itself said that there is a vacuum. That's why we are saying saying that these guidelines are there. Yes, Till sir. enactment of a law, now law has been enacted. Yes, sir. Okay. What do you think about uh, the Me Too movement? So, uh, I think the Me Too movement was uh, a great step forward because it brought in a lot of changes in the way victims were perceived earlier before this movement. I also feel that Me Too movement changed the way uh, organizations used to function before it. It also gave a lot of courage to women to come in and complain uh, right on the spot. They got a lot of force with the other women in the society who joined in uh, and in such and because of that um, many women who had faced a lot of harassment 5 or 10 years back were also able to come out. And, uh, was it on account of systemic failure or vacuum in law? Because why? Because if there is law, they could have invoked the law as well. So the laws are not as such. Uh, we I would wouldn't say that there are less laws. Laws are definitely there, but yes, there have been some errors in implementation, and at a societal level, we have not been able to bring in the change in mentality towards women as such, because of which a social movement like Me Too uh, was necessary. Recently, one judgment was delivered uh, with respect to 
how it is a march over the other schemes for uh, relieving these uh, farmers of their distress. So, uh, Kalia scheme is a revolution because it's not a farm loan waiver scheme, hmm. which is being seen in most states right now. Hmm. Secondly, it is applicable to all sections of farmers, landless farmers, cultivators, sharecroppers, landowners. Thirdly, the scheme covers not just farming, it also gives uh, alternatives for fisheries and agro-processing industry. It would be a direct, direct income transfer scheme and uh, which would allow farmers to have 5,000 rupees in Ravi and 5,000 rupees in Kharif season. Have they started implementing? Yes sir, it has been started in some areas, not in the whole state. How much fund is your mark for this? Any idea? Uh, yes sir, the funding is of uh, uh, 10,000 crore. Okay. Th around 10,000 crore. Uh, it's, it's more than that. Yes, okay, uh, tell me, um, you know, Orissa, you are from Orissa. Yes. Orissa is full of mineral resources. Yes, sir. But it is still a poor and backward state. Yes, sir. Why it is so? So there are some factors which are responsible mm -hmm. uh, why the state has been backward despite having a lot of mineral resources. The first would be infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure development is low which includes both the basic and the infrastructure needed for industries. The second would be low level of industrialization. So the third would be uh, the uh, human resource development has been low because of which poverty still remains. There is a lack of skill development in the state. Uh, so, and the, I think these are the basic reasons why it remains active. Can you tell me something about the smart city projects? So the Smart Cities pro City project is uh, a flagship scheme of the present government. It is to uh, make the cities which we live in today better in terms of infrastructure, in terms of living conditions, uh, uh, to bring about uh, digital technologies and digital interventions, to uh, change the way cities function. It would also have components of better waste disposal, traffic management, uh, law and order. Uh, How many cities have been enlisted? Yes, sir, uh, so that I don't know the correct figure right now, but uh, initially 100 cities would be. 100 cities were taken on. What is the budget? Sir. Last year, whether they have allocated something out of the total amount kept for this? So I don't remember the figure. Neither. Okay, thank you. You studied sociology. Yes, Tell me, what are the effects of immigrations? Now, immigrations, uh, firstly, are a huge burden on the resources. Secondly, because of immigration, the social conditions are affected in an area. The immigrants in an area have to be uh, face a lot of problem in uh, merging with the living conditions of the cities. There is a problem of housing of uh, any other kind of resource distribution that has to happen. Have you heard of the Rohingyas? Yes, ma'am. What is the problem about the Rohingyas? Ma'am, uh, the Rohingyas come from prosecuted minorities of uh, Myanmar. They were pushed out of the country uh, because of the prosecution that was happening from the uh, Buddhist sections of those areas. So do we have also some Rohingyas in our country? Yes, ma'am, we do. What's their present status? Ma'am, uh, last year an effort was made to uh, uh, have a deliberation with Bangladesh to send the Rohingyas to Bangladesh because it was seen that some radical elements present in these Rohingya community could pose a danger for our society. And uh, right now we are working on that front to have continuous dialogue and deliberation so as to have them safely deported back. It has been said that the values of our youth are changing in India. What would you ascribe these changes to? Do you think sociology and the charge? Ma'am, the uh, youth today are far more integrated with technology 
and society because of so- uh, social media, digitalization, and uh, mass media present today. What about concepts like westernization, urbanization, yes, modernization? Ma'am. Would these also affect? Yes, ma'am. So yes, tell me how. Ma'am, uh, westernization, modernization, urbanization are concepts which are affecting the whole society as such, and the youth form a large part of the society. So westernization, uh, modernization, as uh, as we know, they are uh, external factors which uh, come in and affect the society. They bring in changes in lifestyle, food, culture, um, you, uh, taste of the people. So the youth today are very much influenced by the Western factors and the Western influences that our society is facing. How does urbanization affect them? The urbanization uh, has led there are positive and negative factors. What are the negative factors? Now the negative factors would be that uh, because of extreme amount of urbanization, the the youth face a problem, a, a resource crunch. The number of jobs are declining in the cities where the youth go out for work. Uh, and uh, because we have a significant demographic dividend, so the uh, the youth. What do you mean by a demographic dividend? Then demographic dividend is uh, the the kind of youth bulge that we see. That is, the wo- people in the working age from 15 to 59 years are in large numbers. But if they are not skilled, then what would happen? Now that is the issue. If uh, though we have a huge demographic dividend, but unskilled demographic dividend would actually lead to a disaster because they would enter into social crimes and uh, um, create nuisance in the society. So skilled demographic dividend would mean we have more people in the job sector and they are able to contribute to the formal economy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. The problem of left wing extremism continues to haunt Odisha, right? Yes. Uh, in fact, I think Odisha is one of the most important states where this problem is persisting. How would you, as a student of sociology, what is your take on that? So, I, uh, left-wing extremism uh, was uh, very rampant during the 2010 to 11, but it has been declining since last few years. That is because of the combined effort of center and state. This basically happened in the state because of uh, the infrastructure deficit and development deficit that we saw in many parts of West Orissa, as opposed to the Coastal Orissa, which was getting developed. So, these people, especially the, in the tribal belt, they were being radicalized by a certain section of uh, the Naxalists and the Maoists and they were entering the left-wing extremism. However, in the last six years and from the reports, we have seen that there is a huge decline in their numbers and that is majorly because of uh, this... Are you aware that 115 districts have been identified by the government of India, which is called the Aspire Small Districts? Yes, sir. How many districts from Odisha figure in this list of 115? Any idea? And how have they been identified? On what basis? Sir, uh, I don't remember the figure from Odisha, mm-hmm. but uh, these districts are majorly the ones which have been left in the, uh, which are uh, behind in the development index. And uh, basically, these are the districts which would be taken up uh, by, uh, uh, which would be taken and up. Who in, monitors the progress? The district magistrate is uh, will be monitoring the progress. And, uh, at the macro level, at the government of India level, which is an organization of which ministry? So, Niti Ayok. Niti Ayok, right. Okay, now, Niyamgiri, you must have heard of that, right? What is the significance of Niyamgiri judgment? So, the significance is that uh, the tri- it is a uh, tribal belt, and the tribes were having a problem with the project which had come in to. Uh, which, company, what, which company was it? Uh, uh, so it was Vedanta. Yes, Vedanta. Right. Okay, continue. So uh, the uh, Vedanta wanted to exploit bauxite from the Niyamgiri area. So uh, what was the final judgment of the Supreme Court? So the, in one of, of the sentences, just question. So the judgment was in mm-hmm. favor of the tribals and uh, the indigenous people. Now the project has will not be uh, taken up, uh, and uh, these people. Because they they would be having a problem of uh, like no, what is the legal or the law point that Supreme Court made in this judgment about displacement of tribals? 
Okay. Uh, Udan scheme you must have heard. Yes, sir. Tell us briefly about the what is the idea behind the Udan scheme? So the Udan scheme looks at regional connectivity to uh, many of the tier two and tier three cities which were not being connected by air. Uh, uh, in Udan scheme, a lot of cities have been uh, uh, a lot of cities which were will be brought in and. Uh, there, there is a subsidy involved, yes, right? Sir, yes, sir. Uh, and there is an element of subsidizing the unserved and underserved cities. In Who, uh, how is the subsidy to be met? Is there any mode of financing as a part of the scheme? Something called viability gap funding, you are right? Yes, sir. What, is, what does it mean? Sir, in uh, viability, so I, I don't uh, no, 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 okay. okay. Any district, from, any place from Odisha which is covered under this Udan scheme? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Can you recall some two, three major landmark judgments of the Supreme Court in recent months which have a very wide social impact? Yes, sir. So, uh, the first would be the Sabrina judgment. Uh, the uh, second would be uh, the judgment on uh, of the CBI in the CBI case. So, and uh, the third would be S social impact. CBI doesn't have too much, and Sabrina is confined to only one state. There are some other issues, some other very major. Judgments. Yes, so I can uh, recall these two. Uh, privacy. Privacy. So last two, three. Uh, yes, sir, privacy is important. Triple talaq. Yes, sir, triple talaq. What about uh, 377? Decision yes, of 377? Yes, sir. And also, it has decriminalized adultery. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. What is Odisha's growth rate now? Sir, uh, last year the growth rate was 7.14 percent. Correct. Good. This year figures have been coming. No, sir. The official figures are. And but in uh, it was pretty good. 7.1 is not bad. Yes, sir. What is India's average? So this year, according to CSO estimates, it's seven point two percent. And in the Human Development Index, where does it stand? So it stands on the lower end. I am not able to recall the exact ranking. Is Odisha? What are the main features? If you look, go to Odisha, go to countryside and all. What impression you get about the state? It has poverty. It has hunger. Or the the people are happy and healthy. What what impression do you get? So basically, uh, there is a general lack of urban development in Odisha, and uh, because of that, we see only sixteen percent of the population lives in urban areas, as opposed to the national average of thirty percent. So no, in the I'm talking of overwhelming population lives in the villages, countryside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or in suburban areas. No, sir. The... What, what is the impression do you get? Do you get this? So the impression that we ha get from countryside is that there is a problem of poverty and uh, even education and health. Malnutrition, do you find that? So, uh, yes, so there is malnutrition, yeah, uh, though the uh, figures are uh, getting better day by day. Not day by day, possibly. <laughs> possibly in a decade they will get better. Alright, so what are the schemes, government uh, schemes? which are prevalent in Odisha for uh, better health, better food, nutrition, what schemes are in force? So for health, uh, the most important flagship scheme is Biju Swastha Kalyan Yojana. For uh, food and <coughs> health, uh, there are a lot of uh, schemes which are given to the farmers like uh, uh, um, Madhuk, uh, like, like uh, 
Rushak. So yeah, I'm not able to remember the names. Uh, and uh, uh, even national um, health mission, which is being posted, mm -hmm. in uh, is also having some elements of nutrition in it. Food Security Act. Yes, the Food mm -hmm. Security Act. Which is enforced through the PDS system, correct or not? Yes, sir. Yes, mm? yes sir. that is a, one of the major schemes. Yes, sir. Now, why, uh, Visa hasn't accepted a, a Ayushman scheme. No, sir. Which scheme is better, Ayushman or Bijo? Sir, sir uh, though Ayushman Bharat has many positives, but Odisha government uh, has. In, uh, has, uh, uh, is going with the Biju Swasthya Kalyan Yojana because it gives uh, the health insurance to around 7 lakh uh, there, will be around seven, there will be 7 lakh as the insurance benefit which is 5 lakh per year in Ayushman Bharat mm. so that is the so it's a better scheme yes sir. it covers up to 7 lakhs yes sir very good right. so we close the, the interview here you have performed very well and you have been able to handle all questions with a lot of confidence and good knowledge. Uh, I'd like to just give you a little feedback. Most questioning is going to be based on your biodata. From biodata, it is, what we find is that you, number one is you are from Orissa. So questions on Orissa are definitely going to be asked. Sociology. Then third would be your uh, uh, cultural, uh, your, your, your extracurricular activities like ODC dance, etc. So we have asked you questions on those also, yes. dance forms, etc. Then uh, current affairs and constitutional issues. So from that point of view, if you see, we have asked you about judicial activism, Visakha, SCST Act, yes. then uh, Kalia scheme, which is an important scheme. Odisha full of mineral resources by steep work, that is the reason. Uh, you will ask about smart cities and the most livable city in India, you know which is considered the most livable city in India? Sir, I this uh, ranking has been done by a foreign agency. Yes sir. Which one? Sir, I think Kanpur is Amnishwara. Amnishwara. Yes it's being developed as a smart city yes, sir. and it comes within the first 20 cities, most livable cities in the world. So 20th number is Odisha. You should be proud of it and but you should know something about it, yes, what, what has been done there. Yes, okay. Then sociology, we have asked you a large number of questions on sociology, Supreme Court judgments and then about Odisha itself like a uh, Ayushman Bharat scheme, your Biju Patna, Biju scheme, then growth, human development index. These are the areas on which you must focus your attention, right? Are you reading those papers? Yes. Carefully? Yes. Good. So you have done very well. Keep up your good work. Thank you. Is this your first attempt? Oh, <laughs> oh,